Good morning, everyone. So sorry we are worshiping virtually, but the weather was not going to cooperate as far as we could tell uh, from the weather forecasters. Hopefully the weather forecasters were correct. I guess we'll find out by now, right? Uh, we are very grateful, though, that we are able to gather virtually. And so welcome to virtual worship at St. Mark's United Methodist Church, the scattered body of Christ from St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Let us gather our hearts for worship. Come, all who are weary of wealth, of poverty, of power, of struggle, of division. Come, all who are heavy laden with too much, too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come, all who have hope for peace, for freedom, for the kingdom of God. Hear these words. See, I am making all things new. Let us worship the Lord together. Thanks be to God.
a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the Savior's born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow that star. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the Savior's born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ewes and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow, rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow, follow, rise up, shepherd, and follow. Follow the star of Bethlehem. Rise up, shepherd. Rise up, shepherd. Rise up, shepherd. And follow. Follow. So while we are not able to gather physically for the offering, uh, we remind each other to give as the Lord has enabled us and blessed us. So you can bring your offering to church next week, when by the grace of God, the weather is going to be better, so I'm praying for anyway. Uh, or you can drop it off at the office during the week or mail it in, or you can give online securely. If you go to our homepage, connectstmarks.com, there is a link. Uh, where you can click and you can give without, you know, with confidence that that is a secure donation. So thank you so much for your faithful giving to the Lord. You have been wonderful and we appreciate your faithfulness. Let's pray for the offering, which is always something good to pray for. In gratitude, Lord, for all that you have given us, including the gift of technology to hold us together. We honor you with our resources Lord of all, we give you a small portion of your blessings offered through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
So just a reminder, uh, as we go to a time of prayer, to be watchful uh, and mindful of the prayer concerns that we have on our bulletin, um, which you know, you'll know you hopefully get to see next week, uh, and also on the e-note that goes out every week uh, by, by email and by mail. If you have any additions to the prayer list, please send them in, uh, call them in, uh, email them in, so we can add those to, the, to our list. Please be in prayer for everyone who has COVID in our congregation circle, but also in the community and in the world, because we all know how that is just exploding. Please be in prayer for Dan Janice and Dave Schell and for their whole family in the passing of Janice's mom, Josephine Bechtel, whom was a part of our congregation. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, wasn't it just a year ago that we were like this, worshiping virtually in our homes, together in spirit, if not in body? We're a little relieved that at least our distance today is primarily weather related and not solely because of COVID. And we're grateful that you provide these technology resources that allow us to have worship together, even when weather makes it dangerous for travel. But the huge surge in COVID here and around the world is still scary, we confess. We don't know the risks and whether it's even safe to go to the grocery store. When will life get back to some kind of normal? Maybe we need to hear this from you, Lord. Maybe life won't get back to normal. Maybe the old normal's gone. Your people went through these kinds of changes over and over. That's what scripture tells us. Israel ended up in slavery in Egypt because of famine. They had to figure out how to live as free people in the wilderness when you rescued them. They went into exile in a foreign land when they rebelled against you and they returned, but they were still living as conquered people in their own land. And then you sent your son and everything changed for those who trusted in him as Messiah and Lord. The way they worship changed. There was no more temple, no more sacrifices, no more priests, just Jesus. And that had to be a huge paradigm shift for all of these first Christians. We are facing another paradigm shift and it's disorienting and it's frightening. And we need to remember, Lord, that you have always led your people through paradigm shifts and massive changes. And you have reoriented us to new ways of being your people. So in this new year, we ask that you do it again. Show us how to be St. Mark's Church in a new normal in the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a post-pandemic world, whenever we get there, whenever that may be, and then empower us to do your will. No matter how scary this might be, we face the future holding tight to the hand of Jesus, our Lord, risen and reigning, present with us, holding us together right now in spirit, scattered as we may be. And as he taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, did you make any New Year's resolutions? If you did, what are you resolving to do? Here's the bad news. If you made New Year's resolutions, statistically speaking, this Friday is when you'll, you'll probably give up on them. The second Friday in January is what they call Quitter's Day. It's when most Americans who make New Year's resolutions abandon them. About 40% of 
of Americans make resolutions every year. And, and usually there are things like, we want to lose weight and eat healthier, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop swearing, you know, lead a, lead a better life. But only eight or nine percent of people who make resolutions actually stick with them. So why do people give up? Primarily, they lack motivation. See, change is hard and people mostly do not change until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying where you are. So let me see if I can get this up here. There we go. I have a question. I have a question here as we get ourselves ready for a new year and new you. We're getting close to quitters day. How's your pain scale? Is the pain of staying where you are is the pain of going through life carrying heavy loads. Is that exceeding the pain of the change you may need to make. And if it is, maybe it's time to drop those weights. So let's talk about leading a new year and a new you in the new year. That's the name of this new series. Uh, and, and really it's focused, I hope, on thinking about how in the new year we can actually lead um, a Jesus-centered life. And when we think about leading a Jesus-centered life, I think we, we tend to assume that means we're going to have to do a lot more. But for us to truly lead a life centered on Jesus, we probably first have to think about doing less, about giving up a lot of stuff that is going to hold us back. And we make all these New Year's resolutions, but New Year's resolutions, as we see just from the numbers, don't work. They're not effective. Instead of resolutions, we should think about how we might be able to set goals for the new year and not huge goals. We talked about this during Advent, but goals that are achievable, smaller goals things that we're less likely to abandon because they're just too big and too weighty and, and, and to make plans on how we're going to achieve those goals because otherwise it's just all too easy to walk away as Quitter's Day proves to us. And how we can do that uh, it is to figure out how we can get into the zone with Jesus. Do you know what that means, getting in the zone? Athletes talk about it. Uh, when athletes are in the zone, it's when the sport feels almost effortless. Uh, baseball players, hitters anyway, will talk about being in the zone when, when the, the ball meets the bat, they don't even feel it. It just flies. And it's like that whenever we are doing life and doing ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. In that sense, it feels effortless. It feels effortless because all of our resistance to the Holy Spirit is gone and the power of the Spirit just flows through us the way electricity flows whenever it doesn't meet any resistance. Uh, and we can live a lot more effortlessly for Jesus. One of the biggest problems we run into in terms of resistance to the flow of the Holy Spirit is the weights we carry, the fact that we are overburdened in life, the heaviness of all the stuff we're dragging around with us. And that's what we want to talk about because Jesus came, one of the reasons Jesus came was to help lift our loads and lighten our loads. But there's a catch, there's a caveat, and we're going to talk about that. So first, we want to talk about the load that Jesus came to carry and the ones that he he doesn't intend to carry for us, the ones that we have to get rid of. So we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11, uh, picking up at verse 25. And, and there, are, there are many lessons you can take from this passage. We're going to focus on three. So let's read the passage first. 
Verse 25, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks be to God for his word. So, First lesson, as we talk about simplifying our lives with these lessons from Matthew 11, God values the humble and the lowly. Let me shift that up a little bit. He values those who are like little children. See, in that culture, little children had no social standing. They were at the bottom of the social ladder. And for Jesus to say that God reveals himself to little children is pretty radical because everyone would have assumed that God reveals himself to the wise, to the religious leaders, to the teachers of the law, to the priests, right, to the Pharisees. But no, Jesus says he reveals himself to those who are down at the bottom level of society, the little children. That's pretty countercultural, and it's still pretty countercultural for us today. See, human ideas about what life is supposed to be are not God's ideas. They're not the way to real abundant life, and that's where we go off the rails so many times when we try to do life in our own power, in our own way of living, and Unfortunately, that often involves carrying a lot of heavy weights that we think we need to carry, but we really don't. So that's one. Oops. All right, this should work. Or maybe it doesn't. Let me try this again. Let's try this again. Jesus wants to give us, number two, the rest that we desperately need. This is just a... All right, I'll just, keep, I'll just keep moving myself around whenever this happens. He wants to give us rest. He wants to give rest to everyone who's weary and burned out and hurting and spiritually empty. When your gas tank is on zero, Jesus says, I'll fill you up. I'll give you rest. When we are struggling under these heavy loads of guilt and pain and suffering and shame, Jesus says, I will give you rest. And he's not just talking about vacation or R&R. &R. He is talking about what God calls in scripture, Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest is not just taking Sunday off. Brothers and sisters, we have the whole idea of Sabbath wrong. One of these days I'll do that sermon that I've done before on, on Sabbath, you know, it, it, it probably starts World War III. But anyway, Sabbath rest means we are resting in faith and confidence that God is in control of life. We don't have to do it all. We can stop pushing, we can stop striving, we can stop trying to do life in our own strength, we can stop carrying all those burdens we haul around with us. We can lay them down and just rest in God's sufficiency, in God's control of life. Yep, here we go again. Let's try this again. Number three, Jesus came. He wants to carry our yoke. Actually, he wants to carry his own yoke. This is a yoke. Y'all from Lancaster County, or most of you anyway, those of you who would be in St. Mark's congregation this morning um, may have seen this kind of thing before, right? A yoke. My previous church was out in farm country and one of the farmers actually brought a yoke in to show it. So I had an object lesson. They're big. 
they're heavy. A yoke was something, um, still is in some cases, that you put on the necks of plow animals, oxen uh, in that culture for sure, so that they would pull your your plow or whatever other farm equipment you wanted to you wanted to have um, transported. And this is a two a two animal uh, yoke, which was pretty common. You had to pull it. It's heavy. A yoke in the culture of Jesus' time also refers to submission to authority. The yoke of the law was often referred to in Jewish culture as submitting to the law of Moses. In our case, we're talking about submitting, and Jesus is talking about submitting to his own authority, submitting to the authority of Jesus, which is, again, would have been pretty countercultural, pretty surprising to hear him say that. So the yoke is heavy, big and heavy. How can Jesus say that his yoke is light? Well, it's because Jesus carries the yoke for us when we let him do it. You know, let's be real about this. There is a cost to following Jesus. He said in Luke, count the cost before you decide to come follow me. There's a weight involved in following Jesus. There are things he intends us to do, a way he intends us to live. But his yoke is easy and his burden is light because Jesus will carry his own burden for us. Think of him beside us in the other side of that yoke. He'll carry the whole weight. It'll be off our shoulders. He's carrying the whole load of the yoke on our behalf. He will not overburden us. I always think of Matthew 23 when Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for a whole bunch of things. One of them is you tie up heavy loads and put them on people's backs, and yet you won't lift a finger to, to carry them yourselves. Jesus isn't like that. He is gentle and humble in heart, and he will carry that load for us. And when we allow Jesus to carry the weight of his yoke, we find rest. We'll find that life is a lot lighter. But there's a catch. Remember I said there was a catch? We're carrying all these loads and burdens around. Jesus isn't going to carry all that stuff. We weren't supposed to be carrying that stuff in the first place. We have to get rid of that. Take on his yoke. And then he'll carry his own yoke. But he doesn't want us hauling around stuff through lives that we were never supposed to carry in the first place. It's not good for us. It wasn't good for us now. It's not going to be good for us in the future. We are laboring so often, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, this is just really annoying, under the weight of burdens that we cannot bear because we were not meant to bear them. Maybe, and here's just a few examples, we carry the burden of perfectionism. You know, perfectionism isn't wanting to be excellent. Perfectionism is thinking that if I never make a mistake, people will accept me and love me and I'll be long and that never works. Never, never, never. Or anxiety, or fear, or shame, or we carry the burden of other people's expectations which we cannot meet. Maybe we are trying to be the perfect wife or husband, or the perfect daughter or son, or the perfect mother or father, or the perfect employee, or the perfect boss. Or maybe we're trying to carry the burden of controlling life instead of allowing Jesus to control it. Because when we, at root, Control is always coming from a place of fear. When we are afraid, we try to control. And we can't. That's an illusion. But we sure try, don't we? Or maybe, here's a few other possibilities. We are carrying around this burden of the American dream. Thinking we need to have these things. Because everybody else does. Or at least they have them on Facebook and Instagram, right? It's, that's an illusion, too. 
Maybe we carry this burden of debt and we're living beyond our means. Maybe we're carrying a burden of legalism because we think if we don't do everything perfectly right, that God is going to smite us, which is also a lie because grace is grace is grace. And we carry the burden sometimes of thinking we have to do all this stuff for Jesus at church or anywhere else. These are yokes. These are weights that we are not intended to carry in life. And Jesus wants us to let them go and take his yoke instead, which is light because he'll carry that for us. We have to give up what weighs us down, the stuff that he doesn't intend us to be hauling around anyway. Because remember we talked last week about the different kinds of clutter that aren't physical clutter. We talked about things like mental and emotional and spiritual clutter. Those kinds of clutter will also make us soul sick. And soul sickness produces things like irritation and anxiety and isolation, overeating, overworking, overmedicating, overspending, produces numbing. You know what numbing is? Numbing is whenever you just try to shut down emotionally and just a few symptoms of that. If you catch yourself doing this, you're probably numbing. You mindlessly are watching TV. You're mindlessly binging stuff on Netflix or Hulu or whatever, uh, or scrolling through Facebook, you know, or, or whatever, or Instagram or whatever social media feeds you've got without even really paying attention. You're just going. Some people cross boundaries by having affairs or with pornography. That's a symptom. Soul sickness. And right now, in the middle of this pandemic, there's an epidemic of a pandemic of soul sickness as well, because we have been almost two years now of desperately trying to figure out what the heck should I do? How do I keep my family safe? How do I keep myself safe? Is it safe? What, what, can I even go to the grocery store? What should I do? What the heck is going on? We are not made to deal with that kind of low level anxiety every day, every day, every day for periods of years. It is wearing us down and wearing us out, not to mention the constant drumbeat of bad news about anger and division in our country and how that's affecting all of us, which is why we are still going to have that seminar on managing COVID anxiety. But in February, um, we're trying to get past the Omicron wave, right? By the grace of God, we need to think about how we can let go of the weights that are holding us down so that we can take on the yoke of Jesus, which he will carry for us. It won't be heavy. We let go of the burdens we're carrying that we were never meant to carry and take on instead the yoke of Jesus, which is light because he's going to carry that load for us. So let's think about a few questions here. We think about getting rid of all those weights, right? That are doing nothing but weighing us down, giving us back aches. <laughs> As we start this new year, new you series, how's your emotional, spiritual, mental gas tank? Where's your needle? How close to empty are you? And so think about these questions. Um, if you have something to write with, you know, if you have something to write on, you got a device to cut your phone there to take a few notes, take a few notes. How close to empty are you? If you had to draw a gas tank, where would you put the needle? And why? What is it that's holding you, that's draining you? 
Is there a particular particular something that's draining you, or is it an accumulation of things, accumulation of those heavy weights that's sucking your your spiritual tank dry? Did you ever ask yourself, how and why do I let myself get this depleted by life? A couple more questions. Make a plan. Think about this. Make a plan. Envision a day when you do all the things that bring you joy and that make you, that give you the greatest sense of God's pleasure in your life, God's pleasure with you. Because you know what? God takes great pleasure with you. Remember Zephaniah 317, he rejoices over you with singing. God sings over you. What helps you feel that? What kind of a day would it be like? For some people, it might be taking a walk outside in creation. Other people, it might be just being with your family. Whatever it might be, what would that perfect day look like? And now, think about one or two things from that day, activities from that day, that you could do, that you could do, starting tomorrow or today. Because if the weather forecast is holding, you know, you might not have a whole lot to do today. One or two things. What could you do from that perfect day that would give you joy, that would help you feel God's pleasure? And now I have an exercise as we close. I want you just to relax and close your eyes. You know, all those weights, we've been talking about that image of all the heavy weights on the back. Can you feel them on your back? All the things that are weighing you down, whatever it might be. It's different for all of us. Imagine letting those slide off your back and just crash to the ground. Or sometimes, you know, you might imagine that everything you're carrying is in a whole pile of plastic grocery bags and they're cut they've been cutting into your your palms for a long time you know how that feels and you just let them drop doesn't that feel good now i want you to Imagine putting on, getting under that yoke, that yoke, that picture of the yoke, getting under one side of that yoke, get your neck under there, just one of those rings, and feel that on your shoulders. It's going to feel heavy, isn't it? Really heavy. But this is Jesus' yoke. So, there's something else. Now I want you to see here. I just want you to see Jesus coming up beside you and getting himself into the other side of that yoke. Sliding his head and neck under the other side and lifting can you feel it coming off your shoulders? Can you feel the weight coming off your shoulders? Because he's carrying all the weight. That's what Jesus wants to do for us. Now, you have let go of all that weight you've been carrying around, the stuff that Jesus never intended us to do in the first place and you've slipped into harness, you might say, with Jesus. Here's our resolution for the new year. 
stay in that yoke. and Don't pick up those old weights again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, it is so hard for us <laughs> to try to imagine letting go of those heavy weights we've been hauling around all these, all these years. We think it's something we have to do, you know? We think that the world's going to crash to the ground. It's going to stop spinning on its axis if we let go of all that stuff. But the fact is that you're in control and that you keep the world spinning and you keep us in balance and you have it all figured out. Help us to slide into the yoke of Jesus and to let him carry the weight of that yoke. Help us to trust Jesus and to walk with him. Starting now, we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Let us look for Christ wherever we go. Let us never stop seeking, trusting that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. May the love of God our Creator, the joy of the Holy Spirit in us, and the peace of Jesus Christ our living Lord be with you this new year and evermore. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.